All right, round three, and I just lost the John food, and I'm up against God Gary food now. So I'm not gonna lie, like whenever you see that on the pairings, and you know you've done your testing against the food decks, and that you feel okay in the matchup, but you just lost to a deck, and I need a second one, and the fear starting to creep in, and it's like, what if my testing was flawed? What if I'm wrong? What if I'm just like getting crushed by these food decks in reality? And yeah, that's <laughs> it's definitely something that. Uh, that, that scares you. Um, so I'm hoping that is not the case. I'm hoping that I can like make sure to do what I learned in testing and um, beat this deck. It's also, this is the, the black green version of the deck. The one that actually like kind of was the, I wouldn't say breakout deck of the tournament, but kind of like it was the deck that definitely had the best performance and that people are now res respecting way more. And Lucas Duco here, who I'm up against. Someone I also recognize from the SCT tour and a very uh, consistent player in those events as well. So someone who is a solid up and comer, I would say. Um, also with two main decks, Soul Guide Lanterns, pretty smart uh, to beat the Phoenix deck. Obviously like the, the way MTG Melee shows cards, like we get this uh, weird artwork of Higher the Eye Tyrant, and, uh, which yeah, it's not great, but Anyway, you get the gist of the deck. It's pretty stock. There's only three Meat Hook Massacre and only three Push Main, which I am very happy to see as the healer player. Basically, the game plan from the uh, Black Green Food side is to use Fatal Push to kill my two drops, Voice of the Best and Trelasera, and then Meat Hook Massacre to sweep up all my um, Soul Sisters. This is why, and this is very important when you play this matchup, you are not allowed to play out more than one Soul Sister. All right? Only one life gain creature in play at a time. So otherwise you will get Meat Hook Massacred and it will hurt. Because you really need to have one of those in play. But you also don't really need more than one. So if they just force to kill them one by one, then it's a lot easier for you to navigate this matchup. Um, the big thing about this matchup compared to John is that they do not have as much pressure. They do have the squirrels, but they're really reliant on the trail of crumbs. So stuff like um, Skyclave Operation, dealing with the trail, or even like dealing with the squirrels sometimes can be like very big. And you'll often end up in games that just end up going like a lot longer than you might have expected. And even though they have answered all your threats, the fact that they still can't answer Heliod um, means that you like, are still gonna have some good top decks. Like I've won this matchup with just Heliod and Castle, just like building me a board, forcing them to spend resources until I find, you know, the pieces I need, especially with um, a Janish Welcome in the mix too. Like this deck has Outland Liberator in the main, uh, and was it been on the board? No, no more on the board. But like, uh, Mortality Spear. So it does have like some ways to answer a, Jan a Janish Welcome, but not many. And uh, that that's definitely not the card that, that's gonna help in this matchup too. Um, being unkillable, or like, at least like hard, harder to kill than just a 1-1. Um, and one note though, is that uh, you have to be careful that you don't have like a board of an animated Heliod because you have enough devotion that then gets swept up by Meat Hook Massacre. So this is a matchup where it's the most common to put counters on your own Heliod to get it out of range. But anyway, anything interesting post-board? Um, not really. Like, they're just gonna board in more, more, more interaction, take out some of the card advantages, take on the Lanterns. Like, it's gonna be very similar as to how it felt against the, um, the Junt deck and their sideboard plan. Um, one note is that when they're on the play, they can potentially board in Virtue Suspensions, so that if you go Soul Warden into one of your two drops, or Lunar Veteran, like, all those um, four cards, they're all clerics. So, Vicious Vengeance on the play specifically, because then will you have time, but they go one and two, and then you play your three drop and get minus three. It's the only like spot will have like the time to kill them, because otherwise they're gonna be four falls, the two drops. Um, and not that you Vicious Vengeance. So that's a possible sideboard card and something to at least consider when you're deciding how to curve out your opening hand. Uh, potentially, like, obviously, like, leaning on Janish Welcome is what you're always gonna do, but, um, at least like put more emphasis on having a hand that can do that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about this matchup. Let's uh, see how it plays out here. So my opening hand is um, interesting because it does not have the one into two that I really want. It also has no other power cards, no Heliod and no, um, and no company. It does however actually have a lot of gas. It's not really like the like, it's not really that likely to flood out. It does have the other chance of not drawing a third land. I am on the draw though, so it's not super likely that I miss, but it could happen. But it, 
thing about this matchup is that it's kind of slow. So you do often have time. I, it's not necessarily a catastrophe for mid the third line, especially if I draw something like a Tredacera instead. And I have to, like, I have both my colors, right? I have a chance to just draw Tredacera on turn two, and then this hand is suddenly great. Um, so I think I'm gonna decide to keep it here. I can also draw a Heliod, right? And then I have all my combo set up. Uh, even with stuff like self saving to protect it, or like Ranger Captain and whatnot. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention one thing about the this deck and this matchup, um, which is pretty important too, is that uh, when you go off here and you make a billion squirrels, the Meat Hook Massacre can actually let them survive, at least for a turn against the combo, because what will happen is that however big the Scurry Oak gets, like if you make, you know, 25 squirrels, the Oak will have 25 counters on it. So if they Meat Hook Massacre for one, they'll kill all the squirrels and gain 25 life. So they'll always be able to survive the first hit from Scurry Oak. And then they can set up like Cold and Familiar Witches Oven blocks. Um, so sometimes you will combo and they will survive. And they might still be behind, but they can at least like, keep the engine going. And you might have to combo again. So it's very important in this matchup to just know that that's a thing that can happen. Um, but yeah, anyhow, I do decide to keep this hand at the end. I think it's it's very much on the edge and I wouldn't fault you for mulliganing this. The deck doesn't mulligan too well, however. It's not like, uh, you know, some decks that are just like great on five. Because it still needs a lot of pieces to come together. So, in the end, I think it's okay to keep this hand too. And possibly correct? I don't know. It's it's on the edge here. Anyway, uh, Lucas Mulligan's to five. Uh, very happy to see that. I do draw a collector company. Also happy to see that. But now it's kind of scary with the land drops though. Because if I don't get there, like, I might not be uh, in the best position. Running out with a Gilly Goose and a Cat, but yeah, this just gains me some life, but doesn't really do anything else. Uh, notice here how quickly I'm passing, not even thinking about it. I know that I'm not allowed to play two Soul Wardens out, or like two One Drops out. It's just, don't do it ever in this matchup. Because my opponent could easily have a uh, Meat Hook Massacre here. I mean, obviously you can't cast it right now. Anyway, I do draw my third land on turn three. Very happy to see that. So I could run out Scurry of All Ranger Captain, and I decided to go with the Oak here. Partly as like a bit of a um, lightning rod, like maybe they want to use a removal spell on it immediately. Um, oh, by the way, notice here that uh, they attack with the disc familiar, and I have the choice to block it. But if I block here, they could go Meat Hook Massacre for one pretty easily, so I don't really want to do that. Or they could um, potentially, like, if they have a trade-off prompt, they will get an extra like, trigger from that immediately, so... Um, anyway, it's just like a good play from the opponent here to just attack there always, because I can't really block. They just put lures in hand, so clearly they don't have much going on. And I draw and a giant is welcome. All right, I think it's time to just lit, uh, <laughs> lead on the Ranger Captain. And since that draw is so weak, I actually like, have a reasonable beatdown plan here of just playing these three power creatures. Like, next time I can play out another Ranger Captain and make a 3-3 three -three or get another squirrel. And like, you know, that's obviously not the intended part of the card, uh, but sometimes, you know, it works. And at least like it can maybe bait out a Meat Hook Massacre so that you can safely like develop your combo pieces. It is worth noting here that the lures can get them uh, quite a bit of card advantage here, but they might not play it out yet because of a potential Skyclave apparition. Um, but yeah, the, the lures can like kind of help, you know, they can always like chomp up with a goose for instance, so it's going to be pretty hard for me to kill them realistically. Like, the, you know, these kind of like mediocre creature draws is not what beats this deck, because this deck is very good against that, but the combo is usually something you can set up pretty uh, consistently. Or like the, you know, draws when you have Heliod and a bunch of like, you know, Voice of the Blast and Tredacera and so on. If you have a lot of cards that matter, they get kind of, kind of big and get out of range of the Meat of Massacre. So, okay, Dragon Not a Giant is Welcome. So I said that you're not allowed to play, you know, more than one one drop, but their Giant is Welcomes are kind of exempt from this. So, I can either play a Ranger Captain here and just continue the beatdown, or I can play like a Giant is Welcome, a Giant is Welcome, and possibly also Self a Savior, and just like set up my life gain well. Um, what that play does is that it um, means that if I draw my fourth land for company, I, if I hit any payoff, any like Heliod or two drop, I will have a lot of life gain effects in play so that those hits would be very impactful. And I think that that's just like a better way for me to set up um, rather than just going for filling a board. It also, I think this is enough to bait out their uh, Meat Hook Massacre. So I don't really want to go harder. Um, the one thing to note is that if they don't draw a land, they can only Meat Hook Massacre for three. And if I play my Ranger Captain, the Scurry would actually be a three, four. And I think I possibly didn't think that through enough. Uh, so maybe I should have gone for Ranger Captain here for that reason. 
Just yeah, they uh, don't even pay for the trail, don't try and look for the land. They're just gonna go for a meteor massacre here. And that's what they have. So I make sure to sacrifice my things in response. Uh, not that they really matter, but um, just make sure that they don't gain the extra two points of life. Uh, and yeah, draw a voice of the blessed. So now, uh, actually I'm gonna pause here real quick. Um, now I think it's better to just develop the voice. So I make sure to develop another threat rather than just a 3-3 or a scurry oak. Um, ideally, actually, I would hit a Heliot off the company and then play Scurry Oak after the Heliot, so that this one is never um, exposed to potentially another Meat Hook Massacre or something. So ideally, especially when you have a Giant's Welcome in play, you want to like go a Giant's Welcome into Heliot and have those things in play. And that means that the opponent is forced to play very active, because when you have a Scurry Oak in hand, you could just like at any moment just play it and immediately win, because that will trigger the Welcomes and start the combo. So... In that spot, the opponent is incentivized to uh, like try and play, you know, play defensively with fatal pushes and so on. And it kind of has this um, splinter twin like effect on the game where the opponent is you just forced to play reactive and you can just do other stuff. You don't have to play a scurry or into the open mana. So you can kind of like do other stuff. They can't really use the fatal push because then it dies a combo, but maybe you eventually bait it out anyway. Um, so that, that, that's the first step. <laughs> the second thing is. Uh, you might think that, yeah, I want to play Lunar Veteran and then the Voice of the Blessed. Because then, you know, that way you gain more life and that should be more triggers, right? But, well, when you play the Lunar Veteran and you don't have a Voice in play, you're just wasting those life gain triggers. Because, like, the life by itself doesn't matter. It only matters when it triggers something else. And you actually gain more advantage by playing the Voice first, because you gain two life, and then playing Lunar Veteran, gaining two more life. So this will get four counters rather than just three counters. Do note that this is different from when you only have, if you only had one Agianis Welcome in play, then the order wouldn't matter in terms of how many counters. If I play the voice first, gain one life, play Lunar Veteran, gain one life, that's two counters. Or if I play Lunar Veteran first and play voice and just get two counters immediately, that's the same thing. But I gain one extra life by playing the Lunar Veteran first. So if you only have one other life gain effect in play, you play your uh, you, you play your life gain guy first. Um, but if you but if you have two or more in play, then you're supposed to play your payoff first. Yeah, just a small rule of thumb. Uh, might be uh, pretty obvious for some, but uh, I still can't, can't buy, catch myself thinking about it a lot uh, in games. I'm not thinking about it a lot, but oh, yeah, I don't spend much time thinking about it, but I still catch myself being like, hey, hold on, which one is the better here, actually? So yeah, it's just good to have that rule of thumb, save a bit of time that way. But anyway, now I have this voice of the blessed, and that's also, you know, an issue here for my opponent. Um, the thing though is that they can't actually just keep chomping with the goose and, and bring it back to with Lurus. So I draw my fourth land here for company, and I can just go for it now. Basically, if I hit two creatures here, I'll have an indestructible voice of the blessed, which is a pretty big game. <coughs> but not as big as normally because of the well, because of the Lurus. There's also the downside that whatever I hit off company my opponent might be able to clear up with a um, with a Meat Hook Massacre, so I have to be aware of that too. I think ultimately, because my opponent is tapped out now and I'm not going to be able to fail with my voice, I think now is the way I, the time I pull the trigger. If I hit another, like, Trelacera of voice, it'll go to... Like, I'll gain, you know, six more life, potentially. Uh, and Or at least, like, three more. And that'll already put it out of range of the Meat Hook Massacre, because my opponent has... Five, six, maybe seven with a land mana, but they have to have a land, and I would have to like only hit one voice of the blessed off this one for that to actually punish me. Or like if I hit any you know like life gain creatures, yeah they can clear them, but I still have two giants welcome, so it doesn't actually matter if they clear my soul wardens here. Plus there's a chance that I just like win the game. So I think what I'm supposed to do is just attack with the voice, and if they don't block, I'm supposed to cast a collective company now, mid combat. It also means that if I hit Skyclave Apparition, I can get rid of the trail before they can trigger it. And they might just die. If I hit the combo, they'll just be dead. So I should have done that, uh, I think. But yeah, whatever. I'm passing the turn here. Uh, playing around Meatwork Massacre is what I'm telling myself, but I'm not really doing that because Meatwork Massacre doesn't actually matter here. Because yeah, also like another thing I could hit is Scurry Oak, but I have another in hand, so I don't care about keeping my Scurry Oak not alive, the one that's gonna be in play. So they play Loris here and they get to bring back a goose and now they have the infinite goose chomping. Um, now I decide to play Collective Company and kind of funnily, uh, that's also wrong, I think, um, because if I hit a Skyclave Apparition, 
I'm thinking I want to do it in response, so that they don't get any extra food for... If I hit a sky climb apparition, I can exile the trail, and they don't get the extra food before they, um... Like, when the goose comes into play. But honestly, I can just let Lurus assault and let them cast the goose and then respond to that. And then I also have the option of taking away Lurus if I want to with my Skyclave Apparition. Which I think will be better, because this voice, again, will be indestructible. So if I can get rid of Lurus, then they're gonna run out of chump blockers and eventually die to my voice at the best. Because um, they have no outs to it if it's indestructible and large enough. Uh, so I think I just messed this up here. Cast in response. What do I hit? I do hit a Skyclave Apparition and a Trellisera. I could also take um, another Lunak Veteran, but since I already have three ways to gain life, that's kind of irrelevant. And I'd really like to stride right towards a Heliod here, so... And I would like to, like, get rid of their card advantage engine. Which, you know, should have been Durus, but whatever. And yeah, now my uh, voice is gonna be uh, super large, unless they have a push here, because again, by not playing the... Uh, <laughs> by not playing in main phase, I also give them um, a chance to find a push. So anyway, we're gonna get a ton of scries here, like six scries. You can just be very aggressive. Like I'm only gonna keep Heliod or company on top here. And even like my hand is, you know, decent. I have things to play. So I don't need to hit something uh, right away. Anyway, there's the Heliod. So like, even if I, you know, scry to six to the bottom and then draw a land, that's okay. So yeah, now with this Heliod, I'm definitely gonna play that one out first. Cause again, they can't kill that. But I need to make sure, absolutely sure, they have four mana here with the Friction Tower, plus one from the Goose, so that's six mana. Uh, wait, sorry, they have six mana here, plus one from the Goose, so that's seven. So they can cast uh, the Mutok Massacre for five. So I need to make sure that my healer is at least a six six. Um, and actually, ideally it should be a seven seven, right? Because they could have a land too. So if they have a land, they have seven, eight mana. So they can cast Mutual Massacre for six. Yeah, so I should make sure that my Heliod is a seven, seven. So two of the triggers should target my own Heliod. So that they don't get to sweep that one up. Because that's a way I can lose, I guess. But not really, since like then they would lose their lures too, and they won't have the combo. I see a Scurry Oak on top. Since I, you know, already have one in hand, and they can't really deal with my, you know, a Janice Block on my Heliod. The only way they can deal with the combo is by killing the Scurrio, so might as well have my bag up one. That means I can just run this first one out, like, pretty easily. Um, I'm thinking of how to attack here, but actually... I, I can also attack with the Apparition. If they trade Lurus for that one, I'm really happy, so might as well just get in that extra damage. And... Yeah, sometimes it's wrong for you to attack with... Um, attack into their Cauldron Familiars, because that might enable to get them back if they have Trailer Crumbs. But since they already have Gilded Goose to trigger their trails anyway, that doesn't actually matter. So anyway, they're just going to develop the board again here. And... I'm just very happy to uh, play out my uh, Scurry Oak here and see if they have the interaction piece. So, if they don't have the Fatal Bush now, well, I can just keep going off. And since I have, like, all this life gain effects, um, I can, each time I go for an iteration, I can also put two counters. Each time I make a Squirrel, I gain three life and get to put two counters on something other than Scurry Oak. So I can also make all of my things lethal, essentially, if I have time, which I might not have time for. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is um, just change the change the speed here so that this goes a bit faster. Because, um, yeah, now what you're going to watch is just me combo. Uh, and, yeah, essentially, I'm going to try and make sure that um, everything is lethal. And so while I'm doing this, and all I'm doing is literally just spam clicking space button. So, like, you see, whenever... Um, Scurry Oak, like, it's gonna ask me to, like, take action. Um, and in order to, like, have not, not have that take up any time, I'm just spam clicking space bars that whenever it comes up, it will, uh, um, it will say it right. I don't know why I'm moving my mouse back and forth, but you do have a lot of time, actually, with these triggers going on the stack. And you can't just spam click on the Scurry Oak, because then the game won't register the clicks. Um, it only registers spam clicking on the space bar. But anyway, we've already started to uh, put the counters here. But anyway, what I did was while I was doing this, I was counting up in my head how much life can my opponent gain. So between the towers and the mana here, they can crack two food for life. They can bring back a cat. So they have five blockers. And they gain three life from Lurus. So essentially they can gain 10 life here and go to 21. So ideally I would need all my creatures to be at least 21 power. So I'm like making the math in my head of how many times do I need to combo then to make them all 21. Uh, it's pretty hard when you also have to concentrate on clicking there. But yeah, 
Um, but it is like, I want to force my opponent to have to chump block with everything. So that they don't get to leave anything back when they go meet hook massacre for one, which is the way they survive all these squirrels, is massacre for one. Um, and ideally having to do it with the least amount of squirrels, at least amount of iterations possible, because then they gain less life from the meat hook massacre. Um, and even if I can't quite get them up to 21 power each, still putting them to 18 power each matter a lot, because that means that they have to block with lures at least, and that's the most important one. So yeah, uh, I still have 24 triggers on the stack here. Yeah, this is going very quickly. It's obviously like sped up to, sec to X speed, but I'm also doing this really quickly in the game because you only have six minutes to come to perform the combo before you time out on the turn uh, regardless. So I, I just pass the turn. And also since I want to make an attack here, it's really bad if I time out. So I make sure to like not have so many triggers on the stack that I can't clear them in time. You can see I'm running pretty low on triggers now, but I still have time on the turn. So now, with the last life gain trigger, I'm gonna target the Scurry Oak again and continue the combo. But what I did, what I did it a moderate amount to make sure I could clear the stack. Because if the time runs out when the stack is not empty yet, it'll just pass through my turn without me getting an attack. And we can't have that here, so... Um, yeah, I'm just pacing myself. The timer's running out. I'm still aware of, like, how many time banks I've left. Actually, I could have done it for even more. But I decided to stop here at 18, because that at least forces them to jump with Lurus. I think actually, since I had two time banks there, I think I am supposed to just get them all up to 21. It doesn't take me that much longer. I need like, what, four more counters? No, four here, seven more counters. So I need to do, like, target a scurry up four times and then target my other things like seven times. I should be able to do that in like the minute or so I have left. But anyway, uh, they decide to block with everything anyway, maximize their chance for finding a meat hook massacre. But even if they find it here, they're still super dead. So. It's very possible there's not really a reason to go super hard, hard in that one. Because they probably don't have a way to come back regardless. Um, anyway, you got to see the combo in what it actually does uh, when, it, when it goes off. We haven't really seen that yet at all, right? Did they even go off in the mirror? I don't think so. Or maybe I did, my opponent just scooped immediately. I don't know. Um, no, in game one I wanted voice, in game two I also wanted voice in, in round one there. So yeah, this is the first time I actually go off. So... Uh, you saw me sideboarding there. Uh, let me just go back and comment on that. Um, and essentially, it's very similar as when we're boarding against Junt. The only difference is that I don't want to bring in Declaration Stone, because they don't have very many individually good creatures, and removal spells are in general are pretty bad against them. Only Skyclave Operation is good, because you want to take out their Trailer Crumbs. But you could potentially like not board in all four, actually. It's not unreasonable to not do that. Um, but you do want to board in Rest in Peace, I think. Uh, just one copy. If you end up, if you have more than one copy of Rest in Peace in your sideboard, don't bring in more than one because you don't want to throw it in multiples. It is like somewhat easier for them to beat. But at least it means that some of their engine doesn't work as well anymore, and it means that their Meat Hook Massacre is not going to gain them any life, or like they, they also don't lose any life from Meat Hook Massacre, and that actually matters. Um, it does also matter that like your Lunar Veterans can't come back, but. It's okay. That's one way you can beat a Meat Hook Massacre, by the way. It's like, you have a veteran play and a Heliot out, and then like, they sweep the board, but you get to put a bunch of counters on the Scurry Oak again. Um, and that continue to go off. So, anyway, that's the way it works. Um, so, yeah, I'm taking out the Ranger Captain package and the Selfless Savior, just like against John. And I'm taking out two Voice at the best, because... Wait, am I? No, I'm not. Um... Yeah, I'm just bringing in Yasharn and Rest in Peace and Skyclave Operation, and I'm taking out a land because I'm on the draw. All right, we have Soul Vault into Trinocera, so this is easy to keep, plus the two collector companies. So this game is looking really good. And they even draw Rest in Peace. So that's kind of neat. Um, opponent here just passes. So now I know how to think. Do I go Trinocera or Rest in Peace? I think if I had not drawn the land, I would go Trellisera, but uh, to try and try for the land. But it's kind of risky because if they have a fatal push, they want to like respond to my life gain trigger, and then I don't get to get the scry. So I'd rather do that while they're tapped out. Plus, they might try to go deadly dispute here to sacrifice the cat. It's actually the most common thing they're doing when they're just passing on two mana. Because if they have a fatal push, they have so many one mana spells that they can probably play something alongside the fatal push. So this looks a lot like deadly dispute to me. And if they have Deadly Dispute into Trail of Crumbs, trying to bring back the cat, 
I really want to have my rest in peace in play right now, so that if they want to cast a dispute, then the cat is just gone forever. So, and also since I have the third land already, I don't have to go for the Trails Era. So I'm gonna going for the rest in peace here, for that reason. And indeed, they do have the Deadly Dispute here. So, exiling the cat. That's neat. Uh, I do get hit by Thoughties here, so I guess they could trick Trails Era, but they're definitely gonna take one company, because that's pretty hard for them to beat now. Um, and yeah, they do have a trail, so <laughs> that all worked out exactly to plan. I draw a fourth land, so now I'm just gonna scry every land to the bottom here. Uh, hopefully I can find enough gas here to uh, to kill them before they get any sort of resemblance of an engine set up. Because the thing about Rest Peace, like, they can easily beat it too. It's not, you know, locking them out of the game. It just makes them a bit more awkward for them. They also can't do reverse things anymore. But I am down a card for playing it, right? And that can hurt me if they're just a bunch of removal spells and mutual massacres and so on. And they can still draw cards from the Trader Crumbs, especially like Ravenous Squirrel gets a lot better. Um, I said the John deck would border their squirrels. The Black Green deck definitely can't, because they need them uh, to have like the extra card advantage. So anyway, um, Tornado is a here. They kill my Trellisera. I'm really unhappy to see that, because again, I needed the Scry to try and find relevant cards. And I decide to main phase my company so that they don't get to kill my Soul Warden in response, I think. I don't know, I think it's also okay to pass here. But anyway, I do hit Trellisera and Voice, which is actually perfect. Um, I could also take a Lunar Veteran, but again, you don't really want to have two life gain guys in play at the same time. Because that makes things easy to sweep up. So if I get these two, they're both going to go to 4-4, four, four, and it's going to be like not easy for my opponent to deal with it. Plus I get the extra scries, like that's really important here. Just trying to find some sort of gas. So they're playing out of cats, which I'm happy to see because that kind of a dead card with the rest in peace. Have those right land for button for sure. And they okay, they killed my boys. That's okay. And now I even get to scribe from the colony garden. And I scribe the Lunar veteran to the bottom. Now I'm not quite sure that's actually correct. Because if I keep the Lunar veteran, I actually get more scries. I get a lot more scries. Because I can play the veteran, trigger soul warden, play scurry oak, trigger soul warden twice. So that kind of plays around them. Like, if I scry them to the bottom and I draw a land, and then they kill my Trillisera, that's actually not really good for me. Then they can potentially outride me with this uh, Trailer Crumbs. So while I said that you can't play two life gain guys, I think you can when you're in a spot like this, where if they just go Meat Hook Massacre, then they're not dealing with Trillisera, and they have another Soul Warden in hand. So I think I would have scryed that Ruling Veteran to the top, played that, I would have scryed the Flames to the bottom, and then because I did not have a car good card on top, I would also play out my Scurry Oak. Which plays into Meat Hook Massacre, but at least that would also kill their Guilty Goose. And I'll get to scry two more times. Which definitely could end up deciding the game, you know. If I hit on that or not. Uh, but instead, since I did not scry the Lunar Veteran on top, I can't afford to play the Soul Warden here. I think at least. Uh, maybe I could, but yeah, who knows. Scrying the... Scrying the, the, the spirit, what's it called? Sky, Skylight Separation to the top uh, to deal with the Trailer Crumbs. They said to draw another one, so yeah, they, they have an engine going here, and I'm not really happy to see that. Uh, they get to draw two cards, play a squirrel, and. Alright, I still scry my Skylight Separation to the top. So now I play Apparition, exile the trail, and. They have a fatal push for my Trellisera. All right, so that was not ideal. And now I've kind of lived with nothing. I guess it wouldn't really have changed anything. Like I would have had a Lunar Veteran instead of, instead of a land, I guess. That would have been the only difference. Because I probably would still scry the Apparition to the top with my extra scries. Not sure though, maybe I'm still supposed to bottom that. Because it doesn't actually advance my own game plan. And my, I could possibly scry and my opponent gets creatures in play. My opponent did mess up a little bit by not killing my Trellis Arrow right away, but it doesn't actually matter since I didn't knew I scryed on top. So, um... But anyway, yeah, I'm extending one of the trails here, but since they have a second one, I get... And all this food, and this this squirrel. Like, they actually still have a pretty good card advantage engine, and I have nothing now. So, I could easily flood out this game, and they could, uh, they could win. 
I actually realize I'm still on 2x speed, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm still on 2x speed. Well, actually it works out quite well uh, for, for this. <laughs> but it, it explains why I don't have much time to talk here. Anyway, I draw land, I can't grab the second soul warden, just have to pass. And like now their engine is running. Even though I have a risen piece in play, it and even though I can exile another trail here, like it just it's just not enough. At some point they're gonna find a um, a meat hook massacre and they're gonna clear up everything I have here. I'm thinking about taking the squirrel and actually end up doing that, yeah. But they can still like sacrifice stuff and sacrifice it to the oven and get like two two more food out of that, and there's the meat hook massacre, so all my stuff is gone. There's a second squirrel. So yeah, definitely can't play my soul warden. I can like do a little bit of attacking, but it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, these kind of doors is what, you know, the, the food deck destroys, as I already explained. In, uh, in game one. Started two squirrels and the mass massacre, and they actually can play out both squirrels and uh, and play out the massacre and like, get enough sacrifice going. That um, oh, they have a third squirrel as well. So like I oh, actually I think I dealt with oh they have the fourth trailer crumbs in hand too. Yeah, so I dealt with like one day one trail and one squirrel, and they have like three squirrels and three trails still. Um, so yeah, that's I guess a way you beat the rest in peace. Um, especially when I'm also fighting out here, uh, which, you know, I'm, you know, that's not really a complaining thing. It's just like, that's very natural for this deck to be able to do, like, once you answer some other things. And especially since they answered my Tredocera, um, I'm in trouble. So, like, even though I'm at 33 life, it just doesn't matter. Like, these squirrels are going to be humongous. And they're going to draw a lot of cards here, and I'm going to be dead in a couple swings. And even if they didn't hurt all the squirrels or all the trailer crumbs, like, you... I can like just remove a squirrel and trail here from their draw, and they're still gonna beat me. Unless I hit, uh, unless I hit like a company into Heliod. So yeah, now I'm just dead on board, even though I'm playing a blocker and gaining some life. So on the play, we bought in the land again. I'm taking out, hopefully not a one drop, because again, you're just not really allowed to do that. And I'm taking out a Skycraft creation. I think that that's smart, because you don't actually need all of them. Alright, <laughs> yet another Soul Warden into Tredocera. Just keep him coming. Though I would have loved to have a Janice Welcome instead of Soul Warden here. So, we're trying to scry. Not really need a second or scurry oak here. And since this isn't 2x speed, I guess Lucas is actually thinking for quite a while here. But also, this deck has like so many uh, one mana cards that like, you'd easily have a lot of options with these. Decide to go for Thoughtseize. So, probably takes away my collective company, I would assume. But still leaving me with your Sharn. So, like, Lucas also has to have an answer for that, plus the Trail of Sarah. And draw Heliod. That's kind of a perfect time to draw the Heliod, because now I can play it around the Thoughtseize. Oh, also, uh, noteworthy that uh, Lucas just missed the second land drop. It is pretty common for this deck to keep one landers, especially on the draw. If you have like Goose and Trail and some interaction, like you don't even have to hit your land immediately. You can still be in a fine position. But I have some more thinking is done here and the size of Death is we are trying to look for the land and immediately concedes as uh, he does not hit it. So that was a bit of an anti-climatic uh, game three there. Doesn't really show much of the matchup. I do think I would be advantage anyway because I'm having one of those draws where I have a lot of like payoff cards. I also have the combos just set up, like, if, if he doesn't have a Fatal Bush here, he would literally die next turn. Um, so yeah, and even if he does have a Fatal Bush, like, he, you know, he should definitely kill the, the the Soul Warden. But even then, like, the fact that Helia can gain like give lifelink to things, like, means that I still get to trigger Helia out of my Tredocera, and, like, I just have, like, cards that matter, and a lot of them, and that's usually pretty hard for this deck to beat, uh, even if they... Even if they get that draw going. Like, eventually they can, you know, grind through a lot of stuff that matters. But you're not giving them much time. Especially, like, if you can establish some devotion. The healer hits really hard. And, you know, like, stuff like a Sharn doesn't give them much of a window to, like, try and find answers. And it kind of shuts off Meat Hook Massacre, too. Because it's really hard to Meat Hook Massacre for enough. If they can't use their treasures or 
um, got the keys. So, anyway, that was uh, that was round three. Pretty happy to come out of historic rounds two and one here. Um, and yeah, I did not lose to all the food decks as I thought I would. Um, definitely got a bit dicey there with uh, with losing game two. Possibly to a mistake, but I don't think it would have mattered. I don't think I could have scried enough with the Trailer Sarah before it died um, to, to have gotten out of it. The only thing is like, maybe I'm not supposed to sang back that second Soul Warden because it's really important for me that I scratch something good if they can kill Trilla Sarah. And yeah, that might be the case, but even in that case, like, I would have to scribe the Skyclap operation to the bottom, which I'm not sure I'm supposed to do even because of the trail, so. So yeah, there's definitely something I was thinking about like after these games and after rewatching them, um, if I could have like played that differently. But anyway, we did got, get kind of a free victory handed to us here in game three, so. That's all needing good. At least game one kind of showcased, you know, why I think the matchup is good. Because that kind of played out how I envisioned it. Where, like, you can easily, you can get Meat Hook Massacred, but you can just still rebuild and eventually threaten the combo. And this game also, like, you know, you can just see the power here. It looks a lot like the game we won against John as well. Uh, very similar draw. So, anyway, uh, yeah, 2 and one here, going into standard round now with uh, Mono Green. And hopefully keeping up a, a good score.